Albert Einstein totally changed our understanding of space and time. And even 100 years after he developed his theories of special and general relativity, we're still struggling to really comprehend what they mean. One of the most difficult parts is to understand what happens when objects move near the speed of light, because then weird things happen. Today I have a very cool experimental demonstration of an essential effect of Einstein's theory that doesn't just bend minds, it seems to bend reality. This new paper is about the Penrose terror effect, but before I can talk about this, I first need to give you some context. Einstein's theory of special relativity makes two most remarkable predictions. The one is time dilation, the other one is length contraction. Time dilation means that if an object moves faster, then its internal time passes slower. Length contraction means that the same fast-moving object will also be shorter. It's not that it appears shorter, it actually is shorter. In the decades after Einstein put forward his theories of space and time, physicists continued to question that it was correct. In 1931, a group of scientists went so far as to publish a book called 100 Authors Against Einstein. It's an interesting historical summary of why people rejected Einstein's insights more than two decades after he had put them forward. Some of them claimed Einstein's maths is wrong. Some said the math is right, but they did it earlier. The most frequent objection, though, was that they thought Einstein's theory is merely a philosophical construction. They thought that special relativity tells us something about the way we see things, not about how they really are. Well, they were wrong. We knew that length contraction is real. A moving object really is shorter. It's hard to test because it's difficult to accelerate something to near the speed of light, but we do this in particle colliders. And a nice piece of evidence for length contraction comes from collisions of big atomic nuclei like gold or lead. They do this sometimes at the LHC. You see, a nucleus that just sits around is basically spherical. If you run two spheres into each other, you can calculate how much energy is concentrated on average in the collision of the constituents. But Einstein says, if these nuclei are fast, they are length contracted, and that much increases the energy density. If you want to get the collision results right so that they agree with data, you need the length contraction. This is how we know that length contraction is real. But here's the twist. If you could actually look at the nuclei as they fly by, you wouldn't see them being length contracted. So you see, the Einstein critics were doubly wrong. They thought length contraction isn't real, it's what you see. The truth is length contraction is real, but it's not what you see. What you see is instead that the object appears rotated as it flies past. This phenomenon is what's called the Penrose terror effect, and this is what the new experiment now studied. The maths is somewhat tricky, but the Penrose terror effect is fairly easy to understand with this image from the new paper. You see, the issue is that as the object passes by, in this case from left to right, the light which scatters off the object or which is emitted from it doesn't arrive at the camera or in your eyes at the same time. Rather, the light that comes further from the back of the object arrives later. But while the light travels, the object moves. The net result is that the object appears rotated. This is an example of how this would look for a sphere. This is the sphere if it just sits there. This is what you'd see if the sphere accelerated from 0.8 to 0.99 times the speed of light. You see how it appears to rotate more as it speeds up. But the authors of the new paper use a cube. So here is another brief clip that shows what you'd see for a cube that moved at 0.8 times the speed of light. For this new experiment, they didn't actually speed up the cube to the speed of light. That's on unfortunately still unfeasible. But what they did was instead that they moved the cube manually in steps from left to right and then they measured the light that arrived at the same time at the camera. 
It took me a while to understand why this indeed measures the panel's terror effect. It's because the effect really comes from this time delay between the far and near side of the object. But it's such a tiny delay, they had to measure the photon arrival at the level of some picoseconds. And here is what they get when they assemble the data. It fits the theory perfectly. This gets a 0 out of 10 on my bullshit meter. It's a really cute experiment. There are two things I find amazing about this. One is that the Penrose terror effect was predicted in 1959, more than half a century after Einstein put forward his theory. The other thing that's amazing is that it took another half a century to pull off this experiment. And maybe in another 50 years we'll have figured out the warp drive and do it with a cute that actually does move with almost the speed of light. So the story here isn't that Einstein was right. Einstein himself didn't know this. The story is that even 100 years later, we're still trying to digest what he taught us about reality. Next time you scroll on Instagram, keep in mind, the way we see things isn't how they really are. How does that work? Why is that so? If those are questions you also like to ask, you should really have a look at Brilliant. It's a great way to practice your problem-solving skills and your critical thinking. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses just what I'm interested in. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free and if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.